Hey guys, Jared here with Wireframe Workshop and welcome to my living room. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys some of the tips and tricks that I use to light my scenes inside of Blender. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, and so starting off with the thumbnail, we're gonna hop over into the 3D viewport here. And now guys, the way that I lit this scene is actually really simple. So for the most part, it's just an HDRI that I've rotated a little bit to give us some lighting coming through this window and through this doorway to act as a key light to illuminate our subject, this bear. So I did do something a little bit special for this scene though. I have two light portals. I have one here on this window and I have another one outside here on this doorway. And now light portals act as a really useful way to cut down on the overall amount of noise in our scene by transporting the rays from the HDRI to the openings that we specify with the portal. Now moving on to the way that I control the HDRI, I use a free add-on called Easy HDRI. And now guys, this add-on is super powerful and I highly recommend it. I'll have a link to it in the description below. And this add-on allows us to quickly adjust the settings of our HDRI, such as the rotation and the strength. And we can even adjust the color of our HDRI by adjusting the tint and the factor down here. So say I want more of a nighttime feel to our scene. I might crank up the factor and then adjust the tint to a blue color drastically changing the overall mood of our scene in just two quick steps. And that wraps it up for this scene, but I have a couple more tricks to show you. So let's go ahead and move on over to our next scene. So I did a couple of things different here. And now what the eagle eye amongst you viewers might have already noticed is that I have a sun lamp in the scene. Now the reason that I'm using a sun lamp instead of just the HDRI is I have this really nice forest HDRI that gives a really nice quality to the lighting of the scene but this HDRI doesn't have a very strong directional light, which means that by itself, we have a pretty dull scene without much value contrast. Now, if I turn the sun back on, you can see that we get some really nice spec hits here on the mushrooms, and that creates a much more striking image. It turns out that it's really useful to know some art theory when you're trying to create art. Who would have guessed? And now another trick that I use to drive up that all-important value contrast is a gobo. So a gobo is usually a 2D plane that you use to cast shadows on your scene to fake that the scene is larger or has more complexity than it really does. So the way that I'm using it in this scene is to hold out some of the spec hits from our foreground area and our background area. So you can see the shadow being cast here in the foreground and you can see the shadow being cast right behind the mushrooms here. So if we hop into the camera view, what you'll notice is those blades of grass are much darker than some of the other blades of grass around, and the area right behind our mushrooms is much darker than the mushrooms themselves. So now if I go ahead and turn them off, what you'll notice is those blades of grass are actually much lighter now, and same with the grass in the background. And it starts to fight with the subjects in our scene because there's a lot less of that value contrast. So your eye isn't really drawn to our subject where we want it, as much as it's drawn at multiple areas around the scene. So turning it back on, you can see how much it really helps pull the focus to the subjects, which are these mushrooms. I still have a couple more lighting tricks up my sleeve to show you guys that you can use in your scenes. So let's hop on over to the next one. Now in this absolutely breathtaking portrait of a bucket, I used a special trick that I learned from my father who was a professional photographer. And that trick is a plane but not just any plane, an invisible plane. Now, this is very important. The way that I made the plane invisible is I went to visibility under object info and I unchecked visible the camera, but I left diffuse and glossy checked. Now this is important because we still want it to bounce light from the environment back up onto her face. Now showing you guys the material, you can see that it is just a principled shader with a plain gray diffuse color. Zooming in, I wanna show you guys what it looks like without the plane on. So you can see that it's already noticeably darker. And something you wanna keep in mind when you're trying to light your characters is the faces will oftentimes get dark from either the shadow on the brow, or in this case, it's the shadow coming off of the hat. Now that's where the plane comes in to bounce the lighting back up onto the face, getting rid of those shadows. And in the real world, usually it's kind of like a mylar material, but I use a diffuse plane. A glossy plane works too, but the reason why I use the diffuse plane is sometimes with the glossy plane, you can get highlights reflected back up onto the face rather than diffuse lighting, which tends to look more natural. And in the real world, it's used to get rid of those dark values underneath the eyes on a sunny day typically, 
But even in an overcasting like this, it's useful to get rid of the dark values caused by the hat. Now there's two things to keep in mind when using the plane to bounce lighting back up onto the face. The first thing is, is the scale of the plane matters. If you have the scale too small and are just lighting the face, the neck and shoulders area might look dark, meaning the face looks unnaturally lit. Now, if you make it too big, you might be lifting the shadows on the overall model too much, making it not fit in the scene as well, also making it feel unnaturally lit. And the second thing you need to remember is the value of the plane. So if you increase the value of the plane, that makes the light being cast up back onto the face brighter. And if you decrease the value of the plane, that makes it darker. You can alternatively use the roughness value of the plane rather than the diffuse value. But like I said before with the glossy plane, sometimes that can have an unintended consequence of casting unnatural highlights back up onto the face. So I usually like to stick with the diffuse value. All right, I have one last trick to show you guys, and it builds off of this previous one. So hopping into our last scene for the day, we're gonna pop out of the camera and you'll see we have another plane. And the goal of this plane is different from the last one. So with the last one, we were trying to bounce light back up onto the face. With this one, we're actually using this emission shader to cast light onto the face. And the reason for this is that in this scene, my character is wearing a gas mask. And so using a simple reflective plane to bounce light onto the face, doesn't go far enough, especially in the absence of a strong directional light. So instead, I'm using this plane to cast light onto the character's face. It's also important to make sure that you're using the color input on the emission shader to match the lighting of your HDRI. Now for this HDRI, I am using a color into the factor because I wanted a little bit more of a moody, unnatural feel to the light rather than just a normal overcast feel. And there is a bonus trick that I wanted to show you guys while we're in here. So if you look behind the character's shoulder, you'll see the forest goes off into the distance. What it actually is, is a picture of a forest that I took. And this is a really easy way to increase the distance of your scene without adding any geometry. Now, all it is is simply a picture of a forest plugged into a principled shader. And then I use the vertex color to kind of paint an uneven top to it. And I use that to blend in between the principal shader that I mentioned and a transparent shader. Now, sometimes, depending on the situation, you may want to use a emission shader set to a low value. But in this case, I preferred the look of the principal shader because of the way it got shadowed by the rest of the forest. Hopping into the finished render, you can see the uneven top breaks up the edge really nicely on it. And the value of it blends in really nicely with the rest of the forest. Sometimes, depending on the situation, you may have to tweak the color and saturation of your image. But in this case, it worked really nicely and I didn't need to do any additional tweaks to it. And that's a really good way of adding distance to your scene without adding any more work for yourself or adding any complexity for your computer to have to render. But guys, just like in this scene here, it really is usually just an HDRI. And those tips and tricks that I showed you today are the tools that I use to get that last 5% when the HDRI isn't quite cutting. And Polyhaven is a great place to download those HDRIs. You can download them in a variety of resolutions, which is really handy. So for a scene like this, I might go with a 2K resolution HDRI, since you're not actually going to see it and you're just using it for the lighting. I'll have a link to Polyhaven down in the description. Hey guys, welcome back to my living room and thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you guys liked it, go ahead and leave a like. If you guys hated it, tell me I'm trash in the comments. Otherwise, please consider subscribing. Uh, hit the bell if you guys want a notification like every four months. Uh, yeah, but on a more serious note, thank you guys so much for all the support on my last video. Getting 10,000 views on just my second video is so much more than I thought that I was going to get on the channel as a whole. So I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys and keep following along if you guys want more awkward outros.